Hello learners, uh, welcome to our session today. I am your instructor, CPA Aringo Frederick. In our class today, is a continuation of what we've been doing earlier on. We started our block module paper, uh, revisions, and to now, or to date, we've handled the first four questions. So, the remaining last question is the question that I want us to handle today. And the question that I want us to handle today, ideally this is a question number five. And the main concept under this question is, the main concept under this question, ideally we will be talking about the concept of value added tax. We will be talking about the concept of VAT. This is the main concept under question number five, under question number five, under question number five. So maybe just to take you through uh, what... Uh, you are supposed to know anytime you're dealing with VAT. First of all, it's upon us to understand what is VAT. And VAT normally tend to term it as a tax chargeable on the supply of goods and services within a country. Within a country. So, in this case, these are just uh, tax chargeable on the supply of goods and services within a country. And after we've uh, noted what VAT is, another key element, my good students, that you must always grasp any time you're dealing with VAT is the concept of understanding how will you determine our VAT payable or refundable, how to determine VAT payable or refundable. And to determine our VAT payable or refundable, you must always recall this, the concept of output tax minus input tax. Whereas output tax, this ideally, these are tax on sales. Whereas input tax, these are just tax on, tax on purchases. Then, the moment I'm able to understand that, then I should also come and understand the concept of VAT payable in the event that we have deductible input tax. In the event that we have, in the event that we do have deductible in the event that we do have deductible input tax in the event that we do have deductible input how will you determine our VAT payable or refundable in the event that we do have deductible input so to determine our VAT payable or uh, refundable any time we do have deductible input tax we'll be talking of our output tax we less our deductible we less our deductible input tax and how will we determine our deductible input tax? To determine our deductible input tax, to determine our deductible input tax, I'll be talking about our taxable supplies. I'll be talking about our taxable supplies. We divide by our total supplies. We divide by our total supplies. We multiply by our input tax. That should give us our deductible input tax. Whereas taxable supplies will comprise of, taxable supplies will comprise of the following. Taxable supplies will comprise of, talk of, standard, rated, zero rated, and a special rate supplies. What about our total supplies? Total supplies will comprise of the following, will comprise of all these, in addition to that, and exempt supplies. So that is what will constitute our total supplies. So it will always be very important for us to understand, for us to use this aspect of deductible input tax, I'm going to use the concept of deductible input tax in the event that the examiner probably has given us that this taxpayer was dealing with mixed supplies. Meaning that mixed supplies, he was having both taxable and exempt supplies. That is when I'll be required to determine our deductible input tax. Then another concept that you should always be able to understand anytime you are dealing with VAT is upon you to come and know some of the privileged persons 
privileged uh, persons and institutions, privileged persons and institutions, very key for us to understand, very key concept that anytime you're dealing with VAT, make sure you're good on that, make sure you're good on that, make sure you're good on that, make sure you're good on that. Then another element, my good student, that you must always have in mind, again, another element that you must always have in mind anytime you are dealing with VAT is upon you to understand this key concept. You only term it as registration and deregistration of VAT. So talk of registration, registration and deregistration of VAT. Registration and deregistration of VAT. Very key important concept that anytime you are dealing with VAT, you must always have at the back of your mind the concept of re registration and deregistration of VAT and deregistration of VAT and deregistration of VAT. So, on this case, when you are talking of registration of VAT, you should always recall that we normally tend to have two. Anytime you are talking of registration of VAT, registration of VAT, we normally tend to have the compulsory registration and voluntarily registration. We normally tend to talk about the compulsory registration and voluntary registration, which I believe we had elaborated that one. Then what about deregistration of VAT? Anytime you are talking of deregistration of VAT, my good student, you must always recall that for us to apply for deregistration of VAT, maybe it reaches a point whereby I've realized that I'm not achieving the threshold that has been that has been set for the registration of VAT. And the moment you've deregistered from VAT, you are supposed to pay what is known as what? What is known as TOT. Turnover tax. You'll be supposed to pay what is known as TOT, which you normally term it as what? As turnover tax, as turnover tax, as turnover tax. So these are some of the very important concepts. These are some of the very important concepts that you must always have in mind anytime we are dealing with VAT. In addition to that, my good student, in addition to that, the other concept that you must be good at is understanding how do we account for VAT. Accounting, accounting for VAT. Accounting for VAT. And uh, looking at accounting for VAT, we normally tend to talk about the aspect of using the T format and we can also use what columnar format we can use columnar format we can use columnar format these are the two main formats that you normally tend to look at anytime we are dealing with vat anytime we are dealing with vat so to this juncture my good student as if we've done almost uh we've looked at uh, some of the key areas and concept that you must always tend to understand Anytime we are dealing with what? VAT. I believe we recall the T format. The best time to use T format. And we had also talked about columnar format. And the best time to use what? To use columnar format. So, the moment you have this concept, my good student. Also, it will be very important for you also to understand some of the rights and obligation of the taxpayers in relation to VAT. Rights and, and obligation. Rights and obligation of taxpayers in relation to VAT. The moment you are good in all this, you'll find that at no any given point will a question for VAT probably, uh, uh, maybe in the event that probably you've seen a question for VAT, at no any given point will you ever be having a very hard issue in handling such questions, in handling such questions. So we are saying, we are looking at that question number five and the whole idea of question number five, the concept that was being tested ideally was in relation to VAT, was in relation to VAT. But at the same time, I'm going to share this question with us. Let us go through that question and see what we are required to do and see what we are required to do. 
So these are questions. These are questions, my good students. These are questions. This is our question for what I want us to handle. So question number five. We start with part A. See what you are required to do. Part A of the question you are asked. Propose four benefits that might arise from tax amnesty declared by the Revenue Authority. Propose four benefits that might arise from tax amnesty declared by the Revenue Authority. Declared by the Revenue Authority. The beauty part with this question is at times it depends upon us. It will require us to think beyond the four words. I know any time we are talking of tax amnesty, this is not a new term. We've been hearing it every now and then. At times, county government have given amnesty for people to pay their rates. Talk of Kenya Revenue Authority, they have given that amnesty for people to pay their rates and uh, taxes. So the question is, my good students, when you are talking of tax amnesty, what should click at the back of our mind? Because it will be very important for you, first of all, to understand what tax amnesty is. The moment you are able to understand what tax amnesty is, that is a point when you can go ahead and talk of what? And talk of the benefits. So it's very important, first of all, for us to understand what tax amnesty is. That is very key. And whenever we are talking of tax amnesty, ideally, I'll just be looking at that form of relief that the tax man is giving to the taxpayers when it comes to submitting and declaring their taxes in arrears and also the current tax. Meaning that at this point, the taxpayer is relieving, or rather the tax man is relieving the taxpayers, the component of penalties and interest. So ideally, it's all about aspect of us being given that relief Ni kama tunasema kusamehewa. We are being given that relief by the tax man from the tax in arrears and also to be given that aspect of chance to declare all our taxes that we hadn't yet declared earlier on. Without any penalty and without any interest. So the question is, Given such, and you are told to come up with the benefits of this, what will you mention? We normally have a lot of benefits, but you can just mention a few. You will find that, first of all, is going to encourage taxpayers to do what? To submit their taxes and pay their taxes. That's point number one, amongst the benefit. At this point, you find that it's going to encourage the taxpayers to pay their, to pay their taxes. Number two, is going to increase the revenue collection. Is going to increase the revenue is going to increase the revenue collection of the Kenya Revenue Authority. Mm -hmm. Also, number three, we can also note and say that tax amnesty can also lead uh, taxpayers to register on various obligations which they are not yet registered, and is very important. Uh -huh. The other point also is going to assist the Kenya Revenue Authority to identify the loopholes available and how they can seal such loopholes from the declaration made by the taxpayers. So in this event, we can talk of so many points. We can talk of so many points, but those are just some of the points that we can, that we can talk about. But remember, we are not limited to the points that I've given you only because this is very wide and you can come up with a lot of with a lot of points, with a lot of points. Now, after we've uh, talked about that, I want us to proceed and look at part B of the question. What were we required to do in part B? Part B of the question, my good students, this is what you are required to do. Uh, summarize six obligations of a registered person for VAT. Remember, this is also one of the concepts that we mentioned. You should be very good at any time you are talking of any time you are talking of rights and obligation of taxpayers when it comes to VAT. What must we always have in mind? What must we always have in mind? 
So that should bring us to aspect to do with obligations, rights and obligations of taxpayers. Rights and obligation of taxpayers. Rights and obligations of taxpayers. So amongst the first obligation that you can talk about, you'll find that a taxpayer is obliged to do what? A taxpayer is obliged to pay for his VAT. So maybe let's just put it uh, down. Number one, number one, you can notice say number one, amongst the obligation of a taxpayer, amongst the obligation of a taxpayer, amongst the obligations of a taxpayer. Number one, we can uh, note and say that at this point, the taxpayer has an obligation to pay tax to his registered suppliers to pay tax to his registered suppliers number one number two he has an obligation to apply for registration he has an obligation to apply for registration uh-huh number three obligation to issue a tax invoice for every supply made by him to issue a tax invoice for every supply made by him, then the other obligation will be to submit monthly returns to the VAT department on or before the 20th day, on or before the 20th day of the month succeeding that in which tax is charged. Uh -huh. Then the other point you have, to pay to the commissioner, to pay to the commissioner, any amount they may have charged on an invoice by error. Uh -huh. Another obligation will say to keep full and true records written and retain them for five years. Mm -hmm. The other point you note and say to avail records to authorized officers of the department at reasonable time for inspection. So you'll find that these are some of the obligation that you as a taxpayer you are supposed to oblige on. What about the rights? You have so many rights at the same time. You have so many rights of the taxpayer. Like among the rights that you can talk about is to get a refund of bad debts. Mm -hmm. To defer payments of tax to a date not later than 20th day of the month, succeeding that in which tax is charged. Uh -huh. Another right, to request for consideration of assessment. Mm -hmm. The other right we have, to appeal to the tribunal. To appeal to the tribunal. Uh -huh. The other point you can already say, my good student, is... To demand that every authorized officer identifies himself. Uh -huh. The last one but not least, you can already say, have free access to the commissioner or any other authorized officer. Or any other authorized officer. Or any other authorized officer. So these are some of uh, the rights and obligations that you as a taxpayer you are going to do what you are going to enjoy you are going to you are going to enjoy you are going to enjoy you are going to enjoy now after we've uh, talked of our rights and obligations of a taxpayer my good students i want us to consider the other part of the question and this is what you are asked this is uh, what you are asked in working out the VAT, that is part C of the question. That is part C of the question. That is part C of the question. So to this juncture, I want us to meet in the next session and clear part C of this question. I want us to meet in the next session and clear part C of this question. Thank you so much and let us meet in the next session. Thank you.